Mr. Happy is an awesome content creator and you should always check out his videos and subscribe to his channel to be up to date with all sorts of things in Final Fantasy XIV. Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and today I want to talk about another criticism on N. Walker's content decisions. I know, I know a lot of you who follow content creators, you're, you're sick of it, but like we got to talk about things when we have thoughts on them, right? Yes. Anyway, recently there was a slew of 6.4 interviews released by Japanese media sites. For the most part, they talk about things like the severity of the story, the direction things are going, kind of just like little teases towards things, and maybe say, hey, we're going to talk about this thing in the next live letter. There's nothing really major, which is why I didn't make a standalone video, but there's one statement that many longtime players are kind of unsure about with the remaining time that we have with N. Walker. So on screen, we have this statement, an unofficial translation from the Dengeki interview in particular. This means that Square didn't necessarily say this, sanction this. It could be a slightly off mistranslation. There's probably other translations out there. I'm just, I'm covering my bases here, okay? In it, the interviewer inquires about the future steps of the Manderville weapon, yes. looking to see if we can just expect more tomes, tomes, and tomes. Yoshida's statement leans on vague, but there's a pretty clear interpretation. I don't want to say this is what I'm going to collect before implementation. The intention is that you can also strengthen while playing the content, so please rest assured that there will be no major changes. Sounds to me like the entire purpose of this expansion's weapon is to simply be background noise while you do other things, mm. as opposed to something players log in to work towards deliberately. I mean, yeah, you can log in and work on tomes, I suppose, but it's not quite the same. You know what I mean? Now, I want to be clear. I expected this. I have been calling that it would be all tomes every step, at first jokingly before 6.35, but now I mean it. Like after six point, after we got the second step, I was like, no, they're all going to be tomes. And I'm just not well <laughs> happy about it. The Relic in every prior <laughs> expansion has had a range of involvements and difficulties across the various implementations <laughs> of steps. Some are good. This yawn is actually perfectly describing the content here. Uh, and Ponzi, yeah, thank you for the compliment. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Um, I would, I would say my my biggest wish for that would be a bit of a zodiac step, like having overworld content being integrated into the next Menderville step. That would be awesome. Like you do more fades or you do something on the Endwalker areas. The Endwalker areas feel completely dead to me unless I'm doing A rank trains, and I think. That's something, why not using and utilizing the potential of these awesome areas? They, I love the design of Endwalker areas. And yeah, they could even drag further back to Shadowbringers or something like that when you, because you had Bosia in there in, in Shadowbringers. So you really didn't develop more on the overworld content. Maybe just integrate that. Do stuff on the overworld, which we're just now doing by doing the hardcore challenge. It, it gives you way more immersion to the world and to the game. I would love to see kind of a mixture of the old Anima and Zodiac Relic Quest combined. Like anything with fates, you have to play through certain fates uh, multiple times, collect certain um, crystals there or anything like that. And maybe then combine it with tombstones at a certain point. More content drawn after 6.4 is being released and people have cleared that content. There's content draw to be expected. They should definitely bridge that gap with Mandeville weapons. They have so many opportunities to do that and throw back people into old content. They could even use Mandeville to relive Bosia or Eureka. A lot of optional quests are already gated by old raids and content. I wouldn't say gated, but give people the op options like they did in, in Anima, for example. In Anima, you could simply just grind poetics most of the times, but you had different op options how to get there. You could uh, save time by doing Alexander raids, for example. Just do exactly that. Go emphasize on the Euphrosin and Aglaia raid further because these are awesome raids. Throw people back into the, the Shadowbringers 24-man alliance raids or anything like that. Some are bad again. and some we just kind of don't mind. While well, it was either accompanied by exploration zones or simply encouraged players to step back into old content, it was something you could mostly approach at a comfortable pace without being so uninvolved with the rest yeah, of the game, exactly. I suppose. And of course, these steps were nerfed over time. So players who were intimidated by some of the grindier aspects felt a little bit more comfortable waiting and then hopping in late, which kept all of the steps alive, especially relevant to the expansion itself. Yes. So having steps that are nothing but tomes just... It feels like the game doesn't even want to give me the option 
to play it more actively. <laughs> yeah. It just found the lowest common denominator between all content, at least for the current expansion, and set it there. Now, once again, I want to be clear. I actually think tomes as an option for every step is a fine idea. This allows players of all speeds to make some form of progress at any pace that works for them. In my book, there's nothing wrong with that. If anything, it should have been standard for a lot of the steps we've had prior because yes. there are plenty of steps that even to this day when going back and doing old relics, you kind of just wish you could dump your tomes into them. Absolutely agree, 100%. I would say content feels inconsistent progressing a character. However, having options was always the strong suit of the previous relic steps, or at least for most of them. That's really all I'm asking for with this relic, with the Manderville weapons, is options. If I want to log in and play the game really actively and work towards a specific goal, min-max, whatever you want to do, I would prefer to have a more focused goal than, well, I guess I just need tomes, you know, I'll yeah, do my roulettes yeah. and then speed run a dungeon. Like, I, you know, I don't, that's not really how I want to spend my time logged in. I'd rather have something more direct. It, it gives me that dopamine hit a little bit better. Like if I could farm trials or light farm, heck, I hate to say this, even fate grind, just anything at all, I would personally feel encouraged to log into the game, even if it's just for another hour or two on any given day and work. Exactly. Uh, that, that would perfectly combine uh, the approach of newcomers or casuals or people that just want to spend their time reasonably on the game, you could still do fates, uh, still have something that feels more directed, what, what Mr. Happy said, that feels directed to this content in particular, like you're doing a specific task for that content, but you can push the whole progress of yourself, of the weapon, by adding tombstones. But just as a as a baseline directing content, like, hey, this is your content, this is relic content. You are doing fates because of the relic. Because it feels super disconnected to me. I think that's that's the overall impression I'm getting from these relics. They feel utterly disconnected to Endwalker. They feel utterly disconnected to basically just I'm playing the game like I always did. Now I have relics that I can get for what I'm playing. And it kind of feels just a bit off, in my opinion. Work on these things piecemeal. Throw a party together with the people I usually play with. Socialize a little bit. Have a bit of fun. Instead of just kind of knocking out a few basic things and then logging off. Yeah. And honestly, yeah, once yeah. you've got me on Final Fantasy XIV for a couple of hours with a few different goals in mind, I'm very likely to try out some other things. Like, oh, you know what? You know, maybe I should do my roulettes. You know, I'm logged in. I'm working on this. And I still need the tomes for this other portion. Or I can save the tomes and use them on this step. Or I could even just speed up this step. Just get that one more item and just shake the... Options, 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 options. I just don't see the harm in this, and I don't see why this wasn't a consideration. So that's that's really all I'm saying. Again, just options. And you know what? Yeah. The big thing is, is if I could do that, if I could work deliberately on the materials I need for the relic or the Manderville weapon, and then also accrue tomes, I could actually work on multiple steps for multiple weapons at the same time. I did intend on completing every Manderville weapon across the expansion, but I feel much less motivated to do that now because I need tomes for everything. And if I need tomes for all four steps of every relic, all 19, that's 6,000 potentially. If they do 1,500 a patch, that exactly. would be 6,000 tomes per weapon. I ain't trying to do all that. I don't mind some tomes, but 6,000, you pretty much have to commit to like, you could like finish an entire weapon and then work on an entire other one. Or you could do like all the first step and all the second step and all the third step. It's just, it, it's just not an attractive option. I, I would prefer to be able to grind just as an alternative. And the even sadder thing is that it's not like this will ever change. I mean, at some point, these things will cost poetics instead of whatever the current uncapped yes. tombstone is. But when I think of like the old relic quest, do, do I really personally want to go back and do the old ones? Actually, sometimes, yeah, there was a point where I was actually going back and doing them a little bit. But these will never be something you guess I like, quote go back and do. You just like oh I have some tomes I guess I'll just pick up the Manderville weapons I didn't pick up during Endwalker, and thus it kind of eliminates another one of those you know like oh I, let me check this off my bucket list kind of situations. You know it's just it just again it feels so involved and unengaged with the game that it, it just can't be anything more than a disappointment if we end up just having to do tomes for every step. That's still an if, but I, I'm gonna expect it. 
And that's kind of been the vibe with Endwalker as a whole. I want to be clear, the things I have enjoyed in Endwalker, I have enjoyed them thoroughly. Even some of the more stressful stuff. DSR, like, yeah, do I give DSR some grief? Sure. Uh, does a, do a lot of people give Top some grief from, from that prog? Yeah, sure. Abyssos obviously had it. Like, everything's kind of had, like, ups and downs. I don't think there's been anything that's just been flat out, done right, perfect on execution, whether it be Island Sanctuary, Variant, Criterion, Savage, even uh, Nor. Yeah. Like, it's, everything's had, like, Variant some and Criterion sort of is... It's been kind of the expansion of disasters, I suppose, whether it be the housing problems. It just There's so many things. But that being said, a lot of that wouldn't, probably bother me and probably wouldn't bother other people as much if it didn't just feel like the game was trying to get me off of the game <laughs> instead yeah. of allowing me to feel like I could engage with the game for a longer period of time. So not only are there those things, there are also the the problems with the content longevity. And on top of that, the content feels like it's deliberately designed to be less time consuming and there's longer between patches, which is why you are hearing people talking about and outright complaining about a lot of this stuff more because we love the game and we want them to create content that makes us feel like we can log in and 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 play with other people and work towards something but we're all missing that a lot this expansion and there's no reason to try to sugarcoat it you know a lot of people like to call me a final fantasy 14 fanboy and i am at the end of the day but that doesn't mean you can't be real about something once in a while. And in reality, uh, I think they need to really look at this and think about you know how it looks and how it actually functions in the long term. Maybe they have numbers that prove that what I'm saying is actually completely irrelevant and the majority of people love it. Great. But at the end of the day, at least I had my voice. At least I said my piece. And you can agree or disagree. So go right ahead, as a matter of fact. If you have something to say, throw it in the comment section of the video below. Be sure to be civil about it. I know that's a fruitless endeavor, but at least I could ask. And also, while you're at it, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, because well, this is the end of the video. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave now. So uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, and uh, bye. Yeah, all right. Yeah, definitely good, good video and uh, well-thought-out commentary. I would... Definitely agree. The game overall, Endwalker felt a bit lacking on the end game department. Even though we had two ultimate raids and that the execution of designing these raids were a bit poorly done, um, even though the intention was amazing, especially DSR. I love that they had these alternate universe and alternate storyline um, things happening. That was awesome. Um, but I wouldn't comment too much about that. I think overall, Endwalker is still very very good expansion but it would be a shame if we would just get smashed with tombstones on the mandeville weapons because relic weapons were always one form of content that kind of extended your normal content further and now having this being kind of narrowed down even further than ever before kind of amplifies the effect that at least some veteran players feel and i think it's unnecessary it's unnecessary because you can still provide the easy way of accessing these forms of content for newcomers they might just want one weapon for one of their jobs and they're good to go but in my opinion i would still favor having the next step being just poetics already instead of the same tombstones again i think that's my pro point because then you would just grind like mr happy said 4500 tombstones already for just one weapon if you haven't started it yet at all and I would just love to see the, the whole overworld thing being included. It doesn't need to be Bozja, it doesn't need to be Eureka. I would just love to see fates being done, or at least being an option for that. So that you have, you can trade in tombstones for the weapon, but you can also do fates. Every fate gives you one tenth of one of these crystals that you buy for tombstones, for example. That would revitalize the overall feel of the, the world being active a bit more, instead of just being centered in instant zones and dungeons. I would just love to see that and overall Endwalker is not lacking content. They tried many things, especially Christian Conflict. I have to say that that's that's my big plus for the game in Endwalker and for developer team. That was a big, big surprise and I was st I'm was i still astonished of how good it is, um, especially in a very slow engine like they are providing. So they might just not have the manpower that they had before because of Final Fantasy 16. But these are things that change and I'm just very positive that we will see rewards for Christian Conflict, we will see rewards for Criterion and Variant Dungeons in 6.45 and multiple options that are not just tombstones, maybe just including fates for the overworld content 
anything like that that connects your character and utilize the aspect that you want to play the game. I don't want to just log in to play my Duty Finder content. I think that's that's essentially what boils down to some veteran players. Duty Finder content can become very boring and it's sometimes very tedious because it's too easy. Then maybe just give better rewards on more difficult content at least on top of that in combination so that you can still grind it through Duty Finder but get better rewards out of more difficult content. For example, just go combine Criterions and Variant Dungeons, like I've told many times before, combine that with the Mandeville weapons, that you can at least get very easy and fast weapons when you play through that content. Yeah, okay, fake grinding is really easier, right? Um, it's more like combining these forms of content for the casual player base, fate grinding as well, but then adding on top of that something like Criterion Dungeons or Variant Dungeons, or even Savage and Extreme Trials, Savage Raids, just more than the usual tombstones. Just my opinion, I think I'm kind of on the same boat like Mr. Happy is here. I feel like the game is still going forward and not backwards like some people feel it. I think they just lack the manpower and it will happen very soon. So especially when we're looking at Christine Conflict.